Now this is my variable clock generator um, PCB. So I, I want to make a. I'm making a few tools as part of my homemade CPU project, and I thought what I would really need to do would be to generate a clock pulse, a series of clock pulses to make the CPU work. Um, so what you need to, to do with a CPU is put in a consistent clock pulse, a train of pulses, so something like a one gigahertz clock, or maybe a one megahertz clock, or maybe a one hertz clock, <laughs> depending on how fast you're running your CPU. Um, and this, um, this board is going to form the basis of a very simple circuit. You can see there's going to be a 555 timer there, and it's going to output a nice steady square wave to make my CPU run, well, like clockwork, I suppose. Now, one thing that's interesting that I've not done before is I've tried, on all these boards, I've tried different ways of getting power in. So one way of getting power in that I've used on other boards um, is uh, the, uh, the 2.1 millimeter power socket, the nice standard 2.1 millimeter power socket. Um, I've allowed for one of those there on this board, but I thought that also, if I could put power in via USB, I wouldn't have to keep finding uh, 2.1 millimeter jack plugs of this nature. I could just plug in a power bank and power it off a power bank. So I've got some USB sockets, which are surface mount, which I've never tried soldering a surface mount socket on before. So they're gonna go on there. Uh, but apart from that, it's a pretty standard board. It uses a 555 timer to generate the uh, trainer pulses. <clears throat> they're not necessarily a 50% mark to space ratio, so it might be a short on pulse and a long off pulse. Um, so what I'm gonna do is then divide that 555 clock pulse in half using this 193, 7482, 193, which is a, uh, a four bit, um, uh, it's a four bit counter. So the clock pulse from the 555 will go into there and effectively be halved or quartered or eighth or sixteenth and that will give it um, a 50-50 mark space ratio. I've got a couple of other bits over here I just want to see the output on an LED and um, send it out through these output and I've put a socket so I can put a switch on there so I can switch it on and off. How nice! Oh and I'm going to have a potentiometer here so I can control the speed. So let's solder that up and see how it works. Well, here's my progress so far. So I've soldered on uh, this surface mount USB socket there. You can probably just about see that that was a bit of a pain to solder on. Um, the socket didn't quite match the the shape for it that I got um, in my PCB design software I'm using Easy EDA to design the PCB. Um, I found what I thought was the correct what I thought was the correct footprint for the USB socket, and it wasn't. So I had to bend the USB socket pins very slightly to get them to match that. Well, it's got sort of four little legs which didn't quite match the holes, um, and then I had to do some rather intricate soldering, which I'm not particularly good at. Um, I soldered the power connector on as well, the other power connector, but this rather large on off switch, um, the <laughs> potentiometer which also didn't fit the holes too well, so I had to sort of bodge that a little bit. Some sockets, I've put a, a right angle um, output uh, connector on there, some other sockets for the LEDs. Got a couple of bits and pieces to go, just a resistor and two capacitors and I'll be done. Let's get this thing soldered in. Well, that should be pretty easy soldering, shouldn't it? Oh, I've got some muck on it there. What's that? Hmm, what's some kind of detritus? Um, <clears throat> right, resistor, capacitor, tiny capacitor, mm, bit more solder, and we should be done. Let's check that out. Okay, let's switch this on and see what it does. Probably take that off first. So the way I've decided to work with these PCBs is I'll make a version one. You can see this is version one um, because I'm not really completely sure what I'm doing. So I'll make a version one 
Um, I put everything in sockets and then when it turns out to not be very good, I tweak the design, make a version 2 or version 1.1 or however you want to view it and pull everything out of the sockets of the version 1 and put it into the version 2 board. So that way I can keep making loads and loads of stuff without getting um, without getting too costly in terms of components. Not that any of these components cost very much money, but um, so let's put this these LEDs going here. The legs are terrible on these. Bar buff. Oh dear. Not going anything, is it now? Look at that. Mm, all over the place. Let's put that in there. There you go. So what have I missed? Uh, nothing really. That's just a socket in there that's not soldered in. Just I can't even remember why I put a socket. I think I put a socket there so I could test this USB connector. In fact, speaking of which, let's power it up with um, power bank. Okay, so this end uh, is this uh, this USB. What's that? Type B is that? Micro B? I don't know. Is uh, going to go in here. And that will give us power from the ooh, from the power bank. So there you go, that's quite nice. I've obviously soldered that USB connector in perfectly. Um, what does that actually tell us though? Uh, uh, it tells us it's broken. Okay, so I have now got it working. Uh, I don't think the um, LEDs are enormously clear. So we're going to try just sticking a little bit of my um, JLC PCB masking tape, which came free with the, um, which came free with the, here it is, JLC PCB masking tape, which came free with the PCBs that I ordered. Um, they're not paying me to say that, I'm just saying it. Uh, I'll try putting that over the top, does that make it any clearer? Not even slightly. <laughs> um, that's terrible, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, well, we'll go with it for now. Um, so we've got the speed control here. So let's turn that up. So that's all right. There we go. So that looks like binary counting, doesn't it? So there's four digits of binary counting. Ignore that fifth one because that's the overflow bit, which is just a very confusing thing to look at. But we've got a 4-bit binary counter driven by a 555 timer. Um, the, the point of this 4-bit binary counter is that you can tap off from any one of the four places and get slower clock pulses. So we can turn right down and we can turn up to fast. Um, and so it didn't work. And the reason it didn't work, as you can see, I've had to put a bodge wire in, is because I, well, let's just say I didn't read the data sheet. Um, so this 74HC193 chip is a chip that can count up and down. Uh, it's got two clock inputs, an up count and a down count input. I only wanted to count up, so I assumed that in order to count up the down counter, you could just connect to ground. I was completely wrong on that. You should connect the unused input to VCC, to plus 5 volts, not to ground. So um, I got it wrong. So I, I had a look. Could I cut one of the tracks under here? Well, it would be involve cutting a track that's really close to another track. I decided in the end, don't bother trying to cut the tracks. I put another socket in. So I put another socket in. Uh, I took the pin out of that socket so that it's not connecting to the socket below. So I've got two sockets stacked on top of each other with one pin sticking out. And I've bodge wired that to five volts, which I found uh, over there. Uh, not very elegantly. I probably should put a shorter wire in than that or come up with some better way. But anyway, it's got it working for now. Um, so I'm sort of reasonably happy with it and I'm slightly disappointed. I think I would do it quite differently if I did it again, but it's good enough. It gets me a clock pulse and I should be able to feed that clock pulse through to other things that I'm doing and get a good clean square wave out of it.